Welcome to a Programming Languages Virtual Meetup bonus video. This is a follow-up to the video that was released last week on Chapter 3.2. We had a great discussion on the, or in the Monday Meetup, and there was quite a bit of, I won't say disagreement, um, but there were different ways of visualizing and understanding uh, the material that was covered in this chapter. Um, and I had some follow-up discussions after the Monday meetup, and I wanted to make a bonus video um, to sort of ex explain and share some of the stuff that was clarified and learned. So uh, primarily in Chapter 3.2, we covered these environment model diagrams uh, that start out with the global environment, then they have these two circles that represent procedures, and then we have frames uh, and the procedures exist in different frames based on how they're set up. And there are some people that were that had questions about uh, when we looked at the factorial example, uh, especially the recursive one, why the subsequent factorial calls, recursive factorial calls, didn't exist in the frames uh, that had just been set up in the preceding factorial call. Um, and there was some... Uh, I won't, once again, I won't say misunderstanding, but some different ways of thinking about um, procedures and expressions and lambdas. Uh, so as I mentioned before, I'm just going to walk through some uh, stuff that I have, to be honest, understood a lot better after having had these discussions. So first things first, we are going to highlight uh, the two bullet points that make up uh, the environment model of procedure application, w uh, which are shown here. So the parts that are important and that I want to highlight are highlighted in green. So the first point uh, of procedure application of the environment model is that a procedure object is applied to a set of arguments by constructing a frame. So that means when we're looking at these uh, visualizations of environment models, every time you see a frame, it exists because of a procedure object application, otherwise known as a combination expression, which we'll get to in a a sec. So anytime you're applying a procedure to a set of arguments, that creates a frame. Uh, the second point, I want to highlight the first sentence, which reads, a procedure is created by evaluating a lambda expression relative to a given environment. Um, so the key thing here is that a procedure is created by evaluating a lambda expression. And we're going to talk about that more in a sec. Now we're going to jump over to the MIT scheme uh, website reference documentation uh, or the manual. And note that in most of the videos or all of the videos, I primarily have been using Racket. There are some uh, attendees of the meetup that have been using scheme. Um, here I'm going to be specifically talking about MIT scheme, which is uh, the dialectic scheme that is used in the Structure and Interpretation of Computer Programs book. Uh, for a lot of the exercises, it doesn't matter, but we're getting to a point in the book now that the differences between MIT scheme and other dialects of scheme and racket uh, are having an impact. Uh, primary, well, one of the one of the ways is that set car and set cutter, uh, the two methods that were introduced or two procedures that were introduced in 3.2 don't exist in Scheme or in Racket. They only exist in MIT Scheme. Um, but if you go to the overview page, so if you uh, click on this link, or it'll be down in the description down below, uh, you can read through this, but there's some things I want to highlight. So the first one is the section on expressions. It reads, a scheme expression is a construct that returns a value. An expression may be a literal, a variable reference, a special form, or a procedure call. So I'm going to reformat this because this is important. Expressions. They are a construct that return a value. And there are four different types of expressions in Scheme. Uh, the first one is a literal. This is basically a number or a string literal. There's a couple other forms. The second one is a variable reference. This is a variable that has a value bound to it. The third one is a special form. So these are all these syntactic keywords, define, lambda, let, cond, if. There's a bunch more that we haven't seen that haven't been introduced in the book yet, but they exist. And the fourth is a procedure call, otherwise known as a combination and sometimes colloquially referred to as an application. Um, and so later on, we'll look at some different examples of these. Uh, but it's, I think, important, especially as we lead up to chapter four, where I believe we're going to be implementing our own scheme interpreter 
to explicitly hold in our heads uh, the delineation of these four different types of expressions that exist in Scheme. Next, we move on to a section called Procedure Call Syntax, and it reads, a procedure call is written by simply enclosing in parentheses expressions for the procedure to be called, the operator, and the arguments to be passed to it, the operands. The operator and the operand expressions are evaluated, and the resulting procedure is passed the resulting arguments. See section lambda expressions for a more complete description of this. So this is explaining the fourth uh, expression that we saw on our list. So there are four different types of expressions. The fourth one is a procedure call, otherwise known as a combination. And this is basically saying a combination or a procedure call is made up of parentheses, an operator at the beginning, otherwise your procedure, uh, and then it's going to be followed by your operands, the things that the procedure is going to be applied to. If we continue to read this section, uh, a couple other things are revealed. So the next paragraph reads, another name for the procedure call expression is combination. Note here the explicit uh, wording that is chosen, procedure call expression. So a procedure, we'll get to what that is in a little bit, but a procedure call is an expression, otherwise known as a combination. This word is more specific in that it always refers to the expression. Uh, procedure call sometimes refers to the process of calling a procedure. So uh, it's basically saying if you want to be more explicit, combination always refers to the expression, whereas sometimes people use procedure call to refer to the process of calling a procedure and not specifically the expression. Um, I'll skip the part that talks about different uh, Lisp uh, dialects. Uh, the next important thing that I want to highlight is in the final paragraph where it says a number of procedures are available as the values of variables in the initial environment. So what, what it's stating here is that procedures are actually just values. So when, when we have addition and multiplication procedures in the above examples, they are the values of the variables plus n uh, multiplies. So this is this is a key point that I think I hadn't understood up until this point. Procedures are just values that are bound to variables. Uh, whenever you have an expression that falls into the third category of the special form that uses the define keyword, those are binding a uh, value of a procedure uh, to a variable that has a certain name. So procedures are just variables at the end of the day. And uh, the last sentence here is important as well. New procedures are created by evaluating Lambda expressions. So in a second, we're gonna see the syntactic sugar that we've talked about before in previous videos, where the define keyword that makes up the one of the special form expressions is really just syntactic sugar for define a variable name and then a Lambda expression. And whenever you call that special form expression, the Lambda expression is evaluated and that gives you a procedure. Uh, the last thing that I want to highlight, this isn't actually on the overview page. You have to specifically go to the Lambda Expressions page. Um, so once again, this is a special form. It, it falls into the third category of expression in, in MIT Scheme. And it says a Lambda expression evaluates to a procedure. Once again, a procedure is a value. When a, and a Lambda is an expression, it's a special form expression. And when this expression is evaluated, it yields a procedure which is then typically bound to a variable using the define keyword. And the define also makes up a special form expression. At this point, I believe we're gonna hop over to Dr. Racket and we're gonna look at a couple examples to better to try and better understand this. Note that I'm using Lang sick P. This gives us access to MIT scheme. Although for the purposes of the expressions that we're gonna be looking at, I believe scheme and racket will work just as well. So the first expression that we're gonna look at is the following. We have uh, define, actually let's start simpler, define x to be three. So uh, ask yourself, what kind of expression is this? I'll give you a couple seconds to think about it. The answer is this is expression number three. It's a special form because we're using the define keyword. And we are basically uh, just assigning the value to our variable, or the, assigning the value three to our variable x. So then if we go here, we get, if we type x, we get three. Uh, next, if we uh, do define y and we put a sub expression one, two here, Ask yourself once again, what kind of expression is this? This is a special form expression. And if we ask what's this sub expression, this is category number four. 
it is the procedure call. We are applying the operator plus to the operands one and two. And note that the way that define works is it is going to evaluate this sub-expression, uh, get the value of this sub-expression, and then bind it to our variable y. So if we uh, hit enter here and then type y, once again, we don't we get three. We get the result of uh, applying plus to one and two. And now getting a little bit more tricky, if we have uh, define square x, uh, so we're defining a procedure, and uh, the contents of square is just multiplying the variable x by itself. Once again, this is a special form expression. If we hit enter, uh, and now what happens if we type this? This is a procedure. So once again, procedures are values, and uh, this, that what we just saw, is actually just syntactic sugar for the following. Uh, so here we have our variable sq for square once again, and now we are going to have a lambda expression, which falls into category number three, which is the special form, uh, special form expression. And what this does, once again, similar to what we saw with our define y plus one, two, uh, this lambda expression is going to be evaluated, which is going to yield the procedure, and then that procedure is going to be bound to our variable uh, sq, which stands for square. So uh, I, because we are in sickp, we actually don't have access to this. Um, so we need to replace explicitly our lambda with the keyword lambda. And then once again, if we type sq here, we get the procedural value. So a procedure is a value. And last but not least, just to drive home this point, if we uh, take our previous line and we get rid of the define keyword, and so all we're left with here, which all we're left with here, which was previously the sub expression, it's now just the top level expression. So this is once again a special form expression because we're using the lam lambda keyword. Uh, if we evaluate this, it just gives us a procedure that's unnamed. So this doesn't get bound to anything, but this is showing you that the, val the value of a lambda expression when evaluated is a procedure. Uh, so hopefully at this point, um, you're, really, you're really getting the fact that a procedure is just a value. Uh, you get a procedure from evaluating a lambda, and we've got four different types of expressions. Um, X and Y here are variable references. One, two, and three are our literals, so that's category one and category two. Uh, then we have our special forms, so those are anything that uses syntactic keyword, define, lambda, and then the final category, the fourth category, is our combinations. So that exists of a procedure or an operator and the arguments it's being applied to. So uh, this is a combination, and I believe that is the only one that we currently have. If we type square of 10, this is now a combination as well because we are applying our square procedure to the argument 10, and we should get 100. At this point, let us skip back to our uh, slides to cover uh, once again how we have syntactic sugar for our define keyword, but we also have syntactic sugar for our let keyword, which we're going to need in the final thing that we look at here. So in Dr. Racket, we saw that our defined special form expressions are just syntactic sugar for the following. So we typically write what's on the left here, but on the right of the arrow is what it is syntactic sugar for. So it's really just binding the evaluation of a lambda expression to a variable. Uh, for the let expression, which was used in a couple or at least one of the exercises we did in chapter 3.2, um, this is also syntactic sugar um, for a lambda expression. Note that there is a difference though. So our let expression that we typically write is on the left. Um, so we have sort of a, a set of parens on the outside, the keyword let, and then uh, a set of parens and then all of our bindings that we're doing. So here we're just binding uh, the value of y to x. This is the equivalent of having uh, parentheses and then right inside those parentheses a lambda expression which is evaluated, which yields a procedural value, which is then applied to the argument. So here y is the argument. So the inner expression here is a number three special form expression 
but the outer expression, the top level expression, is a number four. Uh, the evaluation of the lambda expression gives us a procedure which then makes the uh, top level expression a procedure call or a combination. Um, so the key difference um, between define and let here, at least when it comes to uh, creating our visual environment model diagrams, is that there is a number four procedure call expression taking place uh, in the syntactic sugar of our let expression, whereas uh, in our define uh, uh, number three special form expression, there's no um, there's no procedure call happening. So uh, when we take a look in a second at the difference between the make withdraw example that uh, didn't have a let expression and did have a let expression, there were some questions in the meetup about why there was an extra level. And the extra level is due to the fact that in the desugared let expression, we have a procedure, an extra procedure call happening um, due to the let expression. And so before we get to the really cool STK env draw tool, um, I want to take a look at six different statements that came up during the meetup. So this was not covered in uh, last week's video. This was only if you attended in person. Uh, so there were six statements that were made by various individuals, and I just want to recap them. Uh, five of them are true, and one of them is false. Uh, see if you can play along. So I'm just going to go through these and talk about whether it's true or false. Uh, number one, invoking a procedure creates a frame. Uh, this is 100% true. It is the first bullet point of procedure application in the environment model. Uh, number two, lambda is the value of a procedure. Uh, this one, although you might think it is true, is false. It is the evaluation of a lambda that yields a procedure. Um, and a procedure is itself a value, so this statement is wrong. Um, it should read, uh, evaluating a lambda expression yields a procedure. Uh, number three, uh, you evaluate expressions, specifically in this statement, lambda expressions, not procedure. That is 100% true. So there are four different types of expressions in MIT scheme. Um, the lambda fits into the third category, the special form expression, and uh, you evaluate expressions, uh, not procedures. Number four, lambda is an expression. Yes, we just covered that. It falls into the number three category of a special form expression. Number five, procedure is a value. Uh, this is true. This one is probably uh, maybe the most confusing because when we refer to a procedure, we feel like we're referring to the name of the variable. So when we say we apply the procedure square to the arguments, really, uh, like th that is true, but the procedure refers to technically the value that is bound to the variable. And you, th when you think about it, when you refer to uh, we are adding, you know, x and y, um, technically that's the same thing. We're adding the values that are bound to the variables x and y. So it um, is a little confusing to think about, but note that. Uh, it is true, procedures are values. And last but not least, procedures are applied, which is the first half of this expression, or, or this statement, and then expressions are evaluated. So uh, the second half is definitely true. The first half is true as well, but uh, when I talked about it with a uh, professor local to Toronto, he pointed out that he uh, feels uncomfortable having these on the same line due to the fact that a procedure application is a expression. It is the fourth category of expressions in MIT scheme. And then the second half of this statement is talking about all expressions. So in the first half, you're talking about a specific type of expression. And in the second half, you're talking about all expressions. So really, he said, although these are both true, it's it's weird to have them on the same line, only separated by a comma. Really, this should be sort of the parent statement, and then procedures uh, being applied should be a, like a sub-statement because it refers to uh, one of the four categories of expressions. Uh, so with this, we're going to hop over to a really cool tool that I discovered from watching the uh, lectures of the Berkeley uh, class for Chapter 3.3. So here we have a mode of the STK uh, scheme dialect that's used in the Berkeley lectures. Uh, I will leave a link in the description down below. It's a uh, link for the 32-bit version of this application for Windows. I believe uh, there are versions out there for Linux and Mac, but um, I tried to set up a, on Linux and then I ran into issues. So it seemed like the instructions were a little bit more straightforward for Windows and I ended up getting it working. Um, 
So basically, I, I mentioned in a meetup that it would be really cool to create a visual tool that when you write code, uh, just generates these visual diagrams automatically, and that is exactly what this program does. Um, so here, if we take a look at our first example, which was the factorial example, I will quickly uh, write out what that code was. So note that this is the recursive definition. Uh, when I highlight it and click this button, it uh, generates the procedure in our global environment. So note now we have a factorial procedure that points to our two circles, the first circle pointing to the arguments in the body of our procedure, and the second one pointing to the enclosing environment. Now if I go to a new line, type in factorial six, and then highlight this and run it, we are going to get all the frames that are generated by this uh, number four procedure call expression evaluation. So we hit this, and sure enough, we can see here that we have six different frames created. You can see uh, E1, E2, E3, E4, E5, and E6, and each of these calls shows the parameter values for it. So uh, for our first frame, E1, uh, this is set to, uh, and the parameter N is set to the value six, and we would expect that each of the subsequent calls, we are seeing the value decrease by one. So there was a question by um, a meetup attendee um, that thought that each of these frames should be uh, enclosed in the subsequent factorial call. Um, but if you read the definition of the two points, it says that uh, the enclosing environment should be the one where the procedure is uh, defined. Um, so this is the first factorial function. Now we will hop over to the iterative definition. I'm not going to type that one out because it's a bit uh, longer. So once again, we have our empty global environment to start. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to uh, define our top level factorial procedure. And this is going to give us a procedure here called factorial. We then are going to uh, define our second procedure, fact iter, the intermediate iterative function. If we do this, we get a second procedure here. So to make this look a little bit nicer, we can move these up here. And now we can evaluate our uh, combination expression, which is applying the factorial function to six. If we do this, we end up with something a tiny bit different. Note that we have eight frames now. Uh, the first one, E1, is a call to factorial. And then the subsequent calls are all to uh, fact iter. Um, and we can tell this by the different parameters. So note that E1 only has the parameter n, which corresponds to our factorial function, whereas E2 through E8 all have product counter and max count as the variables. Um, so this is a super cool tool. We're going to take a look at one more example, which was the make withdraw. Um, to take a look at the difference between using the make withdraw procedure that uh, doesn't use the let expression versus the one that does. So last but not least, we have our make withdraw example. Uh, once again, I have the code typed in already uh, to save time, uh, but I'll quickly go over it. So here we have our make withdraw one function. Um, this one does not have a let expression. So note we are just defining our local state balance in the parameter list here. Uh, we have a higher order function in that we are returning a lambda, and this is going to do our check in our if expression to see uh, if our amount that we're trying to take out of our balance uh, is less than, then we can go ahead and do that. Otherwise, we're going to report insufficient funds. In the make withdraw to procedure, note that our uh, parameter is called uh, nit amount for initial amount, and then we have a let expression that's going to bind our init amount to the balance. Um, and then we've got two different accounts down here, M1, which corresponds to make withdraw one, and M2, which corresponds to make withdraw two. So let's go ahead and define our procedures. So the first one we define is make withdraw one. Note, it's a, probably a bit small on your screen. There's no way to make this bigger, but take my word for it. It says make withdraw one. We then go and define uh, make withdraw two. We'll pull this over here. And uh, then we're going to go set up our two accounts, M1 and N2. So know what happens for M1. 
uh, we've got a single uh, new frame E1, which contains our balance and then our procedure uh, inside that. When we go and define uh, M2, which is our second account, this one uses our let expression, which we know has an extra combination, an extra procedure call in it, so we're expecting two new frames. Uh, so let me reorganize this a tiny bit. Sure enough, uh, we have two new frames here. So we've got our top level frame from the procedure call that happened due to the let expression, which has uh, the variable init amount. This is set to uh, 200. And then we've got a uh, balance inside this. So this is the analog of frame E1 from our make withdraw one procedure, uh, which was called. And finally, just to sort of drive this home, if we try and take $50 out of our M1 account, um, we then end up with a frame uh, where the amount is 50 and that affects the balance uh, by decreasing it by 50. And if we take 75 out of our M2 account, we end up with another frame. The frame once again is happening because of the procedure call that happens and the 75 reduces our balance uh, down to 125. Note that the top level frame defined by, from our let expression doesn't change because nowhere um, is the init amount used other than the let expression. So this is gonna always uh, be set to 200. And there's this really cool feature um, where you can click on this and I'm not sure why uh, it was a little buggy before. Um, you can see that there's sort of a difference between frames that are uh, necessary for future computations and frames that um, were just sort of intermediate frames used for computation. Um, if you hit this garbage collect, it will get rid of the frames um, that were only sort of intermediate frames, which is really cool. And there was a lot of discussion in the meetup about, um, it was myself being confused of trying to uh, distinguish between frames that I knew were going to disappear and frames that were going to stick around because they had local state that would be needed for future uh, procedure calls. And one of the meetup members, Ben, uh, mentioned that I should try not to distinguish between the two. Just pretend they are always, uh, always staying around uh, regardless of if it's a frame that can be garbage collected. The garbage collection is just an optimization. Technically, there's no reason um, it would work fine even without the garbage collection. Anyways, uh, I know this has been a bit of a ramble of a follow-up bonus video, but um, the discussion was super awesome this week, and I feel like I understand things like an order of magnitude better than I did before. Keeping track of the four different categories of expressions, knowing that a procedure is the result of having a lambda expression evaluated, and that uh, technically a procedure is just a value that is bound to a variable. A procedure is a variable that is attached to a procedural value. And um, knowing that every time we have a procedure call or a combination, that generates a frame. Um, and that the syntactic sugar differences between define and let um, cause different behavior because the let involves an extra procedure call. All of this stuff has just significantly improved my understanding of how Scheme works and um, of my understanding of the previous chapter. So hopefully some of you found this helpful. Um, yeah, and look forward to the video of the pre-recording for chapter 3.3 .3, uh, tomorrow. Cheers.